Hey y'all, it's Lisha, the Southern Ladybug. Just want to come to you with a quick little video to show you what I've been up to. Not a whole lot lately. Um, thanks for stopping by. This is my, my channel where I show everything crafty that I like to do. Cross stitch, crochet, some beading, some cricket stuff that I got going on. I'm trying to make good use of that cricket. Um, you saw the last of the Cuddle Buddies at the beginning of the video, just a couple of pictures. Got the Cuddle Buddies, last few done. Did a baby shark and two grandma sharks. Those were fun, a little different and challenging. Um, and a Hello Kitty. That turned out super cute. I got those off, and that's the last of the crochet that I have been doing. Um, I've just been kind of piddling around with some washcloths. I haven't got very far with that. I haven't had a ton of time at work, um, a ton of downtime at work to do that. And I haven't had any lunchtime breaks to do that in the past few weeks. Um, I haven't done a video in a while because I've been occupied. Um, we had to say goodbye to our, our dog last week. It's been um, right out a week ago, Saturday. Uh, she was 14. She went down pretty quick um, for two years. I don't really want to, I meant for two weeks. I'm not going to really talk about that too much because I'll, um, I don't think I can hold it together, but that's what's occupied my time. Um, she took a lot of care for those last two weeks. She was 14 years old, so my little honey bun. Okay. So now Sam is the sole recipient of all of our love and affection. I don't know if he's ready for that. <laughs> he, he's a, he's kind of, he's a little bit of a loving dog, but not, not as much as some of our others have been. He's not as much of a cuddle bug um, and all up in our business, but he does like to hang out with me and he lets me know when he's ready for some attention. And if you don't give it, he just keeps on and on and on. He usually wins out. So it's been a really, really long time since we've had only one dog in the in the house over 14 years. So we don't really know what to do with just one dog, but he's he's enough for two or three dogs. <laughs> but that's what I've been dealing with the past couple of weeks. So um, I haven't had a lot of time for stitching. I don't have a ton of stuff to show you. Um, those last few cuddle buddies took me longer than any of the others should have or ever have. So that's okay. They're done. I'm done with cuddle buddies for a while. I feel a big weight lifted off my shoulder. So I have just a few things um, that I want to show you. I don't have any crochet to show you except those two pictures, a um, few pictures at the beginning. I do have a finish. I've got a gnat flying around here or a mosquito or something. Um, and a start and another project I'm working on so let's get to it I'll show you the crafty project that I've been working on um, several of the boards I follow on Pinterest and a couple of groups I follow in Facebook I've been seeing these shadow boxes for all kinds of different um, occasions Mother's Day, weddings, uh, patriotic, things like that. And what it is, is with my Cricut, I cut out these spirals that turn into flowers. So I cut out a bunch of those in three different colors, two colors of pink and a gray. And when you roll them up, they look like this. They turn into a little rose. And you just glue it together and glue it down into the shadow box and this one is going to be for a girl I work with for a wedding gift I hadn't decided exactly what I'm going to put on the front of it but um, after I get all those rolled up it's just filled with those flowers obviously it will be nice and neat and organized and in line but I'm just trying to get them all rolled and done for now. And then you put something on the glass. Um, I'm thinking some kind of a, a monogram or something like that. 
established, you know, 2019 kind of a thing. I've seen several things that I like. The trick is going to be figuring out how to make my Cricut do what I see out there. I don't know how to do monograms and stuff. I've kind of played around with it a little bit and I haven't figured it out right away. So I just put it to the side. So I'm gonna have to sit down and do that. We're having a shower for it at work at the end of September. So I've got about a month to figure that out. And then I had another idea I wanted to do for my husband as a little surprise. Um, I've seen several on Pinterest ideas um, to where the flowers look like a flag. And then on the front, um, something about um, home of the free because of the brave kind of a thing. And then a silhouette of a, of a soldier um, at attention, I think, or saluting or I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I would love to get a silhouette of him th out of some pictures that I have. I don't know how to do that either, but I may work on that. I don't know. That would be kind of cool to make the soldier actually a silhouette of him. That's all the crafty stuff I have going on. Um, my finish, I worked on a group of us stitchy friends are doing a little stitch along with the Around the Holidays by Hands On Design. We did the Oh Say Can You See way back when the thing first came out. And now this is just the second. We wanted to do all of them, but we just haven't gotten to it. So many other things. But we did Put On The Hat. Some of us did the drum. Some of us did the flapjack pillow. I chose to do the flapjack pillow. And it is a super fast stitch. I got it finished and fully finished. I changed a lot of the colors to use what I had on hand and then use the DMC conversions as well. You're not going to be able to see, but I put some spooky sparkle in my stars. There we go. Some spooky sparkle out of the... Um, Oh shoot, Scary Apothecary series. I just kind of got through there and picked a purple that matched the stars that were called for. And I did the cat in black in 310 instead of whatever it was called for. I think it was called for what the hat was. And I was like, meh, he needs to be black. And then I changed the broom color too. And then I used the Etoile new etoile thread flaw, DMC floss for the bats. So they're sparkly too, but you can't really tell. And then I used the velvet on the back. You can see a little bit of a swirl there. I tried to be fancy and go back to my um, rubber stamping days. I used to do a lot of rubber stamping and there was some really cool things that you could do with rubber stamps. And um, one was to emboss velvet with an iron. You wet your velvet, you turn it over um, right side onto the back of the stamp, and you press your iron to it, and um, when it dries, it's ready. And so it makes a nice little design. Well, I did it over the whole back of this, and then as it dried, it kind of smoothed out, and so I did it again, and it was fine. And then when I put it together and started turning it right side out, it, all the middle went away. It was all, you know, bunched and all trying to pull it through. So, oh well. That was a fail, but it was a cute idea. I wanted to do, been wanting to try that again on some finishing. I think it'd be really pretty on some Christmas finishes on the back of it to do, a, I don't know scrolly design and finish the back of your Christmas ornaments or a pillow or whatever. But that's what I did. So then I got to save this till last because that'll be all I talk about because <laughs> it's my most favorite thing in the world now. Um, I got my coloring cotton fabric of the month. This is cream de mint 28 count Jobelin. It's kind of a, a greenish 
light greenish grayish color. I can't see it. And I got my Picture This Plus Chrysalis. It's a light green color. This is for my Glenn, Glendon Place Eggs All Around. Finally got that in. I ordered that and the fabric for my Chatelaine from Stony Creek. They were the only ones that even had it listed on their site. I looked at several places and that's the only place I could find both of them together. The, um, this other one wasn't in stock, so I've had to wait a while for it. We'll get to that later though. Then I got these from Jen. I picked three more Mill Hill kits to do another set of five Christmas Village sets. So I got Citibank. I'm not taking these out because they're too much trouble to get in. Citibank, Post Office, I'm not free, and the Toy Shop. It was hard to pick just three more. I have two. I've got the Police Station and the Village Inn, I think, that will go with this set. And, um, I still got two more to do on the original. But that's got pushed to the back to do my put on the hat and then this one that I've got coming up. So while I was ordering the Mill Hills, looking through all those, I saw these and said, well, I got to have that too while I'm at it. So the new Patriotic Quartet, Quartet series from Mill Hill, they were at the top of the page when I started looking for the Christmas villages and I'm like, well, gosh, those are cool. I'm the brave. Stars and Stripes Forever, Land of the Free, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness. So I think what I'm going to do with these, they're all, they're all on Ada too. It comes with Ada. I think I'm going to do it on that too. It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be nice, crisp, white. But I'll probably put all of them together in a frame similar to what's what's on there and just do, you know, four in a square, I think. Or one big frame and matted four together. I'm not sure yet, but I gotta get to those because I really like those. Those will be those are nice. You know me. I like patriotic. So the big thing that I got started. Where's my paper? Y'all know I've been waiting on this and wanting to start this and been looking for fabric and waiting on fabric forever. Got this last year, not this past market, last year at market. It's a Chatelaine. It's my first Chatelaine. It's Butterfly Lace Mandala. You can't tell a thing by this picture. Pictures are the worst. They're all, you can kind of get a general idea of what it's supposed to look like, but that is not even close to the depth of the colors and everything. So, I was looking, I did the fabric finder thing. I, that was the first time I've tried that. And so, I was looking at some different fabrics. I thought maybe I wanted just a, a real light green, kind of like this chrysalis. Probably would have been good. Um, I didn't want anything real bright and bold to take away from the design, but I didn't want to do it on white either. I just wanted a little bit of something under there. So I was doing the fabric finder or viewer, whatever it's called, and found this fabrics by Stephanie. It's called Jaded Jobelin. It's kind of a teal color and it looked really pretty on there. And I was like, oh yeah. So I ordered that. It took like four weeks to come in. And I got it. I was like, oh yeah, I like that. But in the meantime, before that, right before that came in, we went to the stitching retreat in um, near Nashville, Franklin, Tennessee, and stopped by Cross Stitch Peddler in Decatur, Alabama. And I was looking for some fabric there just to see if they had anything else. And, you know, you like to see it in person. It's never 
exactly right on on the screen so you can't really tell exactly how it's going to look so as we were looking through there um didn't really find anything but um marlene the shop owner showed me something that she just got in and she was like oh this is so pretty y'all got to check this out and it was a piece of picture this plus crystal demoiselle but it was in 32 count and so we were looking at it and i had all my my threads and beads and everything and you know so i could lay it out on the on a piece of fabric and check to see if it was if it would look good and we laid them out on that piece of fabric and i was like oh that's it. You just know when you find something that is perfect, you just know. And that's it. That's, that's all you stop. Stop looking. Just stop looking right now. You know that that's it. So she didn't have, she just had that 32 count. And I was like, well, I could probably do it on the 32 count. Um, it calls for 28 or 32. It just depends. You know, you may have to change some of the beads around and I've done plenty of beading projects on 32 count and hadn't had a problem, but I thought, I don't want to take the chance of the beads being squished together because that's a lot of beads. And I was like, no, I'll just, I'll just order it. I'll just find it somewhere. So went on about my way. Nobody at the retreat had it. No, none of the other places that we went. So I had to be online looking for it. Finally found it, but they didn't have it in stock. So I had to wait and waited several weeks for it to come in and it finally came in and I finally got it started and it is gorgeous and you're not even gonna be able to tell anything about it because it's not bright enough in here and you can't tell the sparkle trust me trust me trust me it is gorgeous look at that you can tell look at that crystal the opalescent in that look at this big piece of fabric i had to have a half a yard of it you can kind of see some of the just very faint modeling it's kind of bluish and purplish and greenish and we thought maybe it would look like a flower garden coming through there let's look at this again how gorgeous that is and yes i'm breaking all the cross stitch rules. I'm stitching this bad boy in hand and I am beading as I go. All the beads. I forgot to do that one in the corner as I was doing these this edge. But look at that. I just thought it was I usually bead as I go anyway. But I had planned to save all the beading till the end on this and try that. But as I was going through, the, the pattern is ridiculous. Oh my gosh, it is ridiculous. And the middle, I always start in the middle. And I think that that's probably the best bet for these type of patterns as well. Because it's a Mandela. So it's the same on all four sides as it, as it works out and gets bigger. And I thought, well... Well, first thing, the middle of the pattern is over a, four pages. So it makes it a little tricky to, to get started and figure out where you're going. But once you get going, it's the same on all four sides. And it's a, you know, it goes in a pattern and stays that way. So it wasn't too bad after I finally got going. But trying to pick, you know, which one to start with and figure out what's a bead and what's not, everything. But as I was going through, I decided that I think I'm going to have to bead as I go because I'm afraid that I'll miss something. I, I highlight as I finish. I'll show you just this little bitty part of it that I've done. I highlight as I go and I was just afraid that I would miss something. You know, these little in-between things. So I'm just beading as I go. And be done with it having some focusing issues today but it is going wonderful i love it i love everything about it let's look at it again <laughs> it is so sparkly and the pattern says that the butterfly lace mandala is the second sparkliest chatelaine design 
So after I finish this, I may have to scope out and find out which one is the sparkliest and try that one too, because I am hooked on these. These are amazing. Um, this sucker is huge. It's going to be about 21 inches square. So I will probably, I don't know, I'm going to stitch on this until I just get tired of it and need to break from it. And then I'll go back to um, some of the other projects that I have done, maybe the Christmas Village or something like that, and work on that for a while, get a village done, and then come back and do another another section of this, maybe another, you know, around or whatever. But I'm enjoying it so much. I do have a question though. See if y'all can help me. I was very anxious this weekend. I started it this weekend and I was very anxious to get started on it. And I knew that I wanted to do the beads as I went. But I usually stitch the beads with whatever color is next to it. So a color that, that matches the beads, but you know, whatever cross stitch is kind of next to it generally I can use with the bead right there. I didn't want to do that with this project. Um, since it was a kit and I got all the thread that I needed, I was afraid that I might run out if I tried to use the thread that came with it. So I said, well, I will try that, um, clear thread like the um Nymo thread and see how that works I've never done that I always just use floss to attach my beads and so I was very anxious to get started on it this weekend and I went to Joann's and they I knew they wouldn't have the Nymo but I looked in the regular sewing section and found the Gutterman, Gutterman invisible thread. Have y'all used this? And is all invisible thread like this? I mean, it's a nylon string and it is horrible. It's very hard to work with. It's very hard to keep your tension. It's very hard to secure on the back. It's very hard to keep the stupid string in your needle. It's very hard to get it out of the way so you can stitch. I'm not liking it, but I got all that done with it, so I guess it's not too bad. But my question is, I've never used the Nymo. Is it do y'all recommend something else that maybe is a little easier to work with? Because I can switch and I can order it, but I don't think anybody locally has it. I don't know that for sure. I did not look at Michael's and Hobby Lobby, but I've never seen it there. Doesn't mean it's not there, but I've never seen it there. So if y'all have any suggestions on that, I would appreciate it because I don't like that. That's very hard to work with. And I don't want to um, have to fight that stuff the entire way. But if that's all that there is, and they're all like that, then I guess I will. All right, guys. I think that is it for today. Super short video. That's all I got. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to, to craft and stitch. But it's awfully quiet around here now, so... We have a lot more time on our hands, and I, I hope to, now that all of the um, crochet stuff is under control and caught up, hopefully I'll have a little bit more time to stitch. I'm kind of kind of digging it. I did this put on the hat pretty fast, and I just, I just am in a stitching mood, so I want to stitch some before I worry about any kind of other crochet projects. Um... I wanted to go through my big stash of the fuzzy yarn and clean that up and decide what I want to do next, but I just didn't get to that. I worked on um, that Cricut project, getting those flowers all cut out. I got all the flowers cut. Now I've just got to roll them and then glue them down when I get ready to put it all together. But that's all I've been had time for. But I'm I'm in a I got my stitchy bug and I'm in a stitching mood. 
and hope to get a lot more done. We've got a retreat coming up in second week in September. Looking forward to that. That's up near Memphis and South Haven. Um, Y'all check out Katrina Boyd's retreats, crossstitchretreats.com. And I'll, I'll try to remember to link it down below. Um, but I guess that's it, y'all. That's all I know. I'm looking around to see if if I forgot anything, but there's not much to tell this time. Um, we've just been kind of sad for the past few weeks um, working with her and trying to get her back going, and it didn't work, but that's okay. Y'all have a great stitchy day, and stay tuned. I will be back with lots more goodies. If you follow me on Instagram or you're on the Chatelaine support group on Facebook, y'all are going to get tired of seeing my progress on this sucker because I love it. And I'm just going to keep stitching and stitching and stitching <laughs> until I don't love it anymore. <laughs> and so I may be done with the thing before that happens. But it actually, you know, it's it stitches up pretty fast. Just one last look. Yeah, I mean, you can't help it. Look at the sparkle. Even out of focus, it sparkles like crazy. Look at that. <laughs> Y'all are going to get sick of seeing my progress on it because I love it so much. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. Talk to y'all later. Bye.